Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, the 14th of April. And Joanne from Navigate Biz, for those of you who don't know me. Um, today's topic um, is why market research is important. Now, this might this might seem about a bit about um, talking about the bleeding obvious, to be frank. Um, but I do feel that a lot of business owners don't quite get the depth and the regularity and the consistency that's required in regards to market research. And, you know, also let's define what market research, you know, why would you do this? Where, what are you researching? So, you know, I know at Navigate Biz, Nick Barnes and I often speak about before you do anything, A, you've got to tip, tap into why you started this business and what the purpose is and all those sort of things, you know, purpose, mission, what is the end game that you're searching for to be able to achieve with this business? Now, you often, if anybody's familiar with me, I often talk about spelling the selling the pen because that's always sitting on my desk in front of me. And it's a good analogy because pens you could sit are not maybe not exciting or are, but you get a nice pen, a fountain pen that you know I particularly like it for those again who know me. I like my fountain pen. Um, and this is much more expensive than that, but it's also the feeling and all those sort of things. So market research starts with you. <clears throat> Always will start with you. Why did you start the business? What's the purpose? What's the legacy you're aiming to, um, to leave? What's the impact you're looking to leave? Now, it might be that you're happy selling this version of pen because you can do very well out of that. And as a maybe you're a supplier to one of the big, you know, the news agents and office works and those sort of things and the suppliers out there. Or, you know, you've got your own supply chain, it's online, and it's only a, a you know, reasonable cost for your customer, and you can give them a great experience. But there's a lot of competitors out there. But what you see with this pen, the vehicle that this pen enables, the fuel that it puts into that vehicle, is that you can do other things in your life, in your lifestyle, for your customers, for your family, friends, suppliers, and so on and so forth. And so that might be the connection you have to the pen. This one, however, and it's made, it got a bit mucky all right, because I opened it. Uh, it's got ink on it now. I, I do love it because it's generally a clean pen. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> this pen is um, 100 times more expensive potentially than this pen, at least. Um, and I buy it because of the way it feels, etc. And so the market, often you might, you might find the market is smaller and that's okay. And you might find that the selling of this pen still gives you, you know, it's because you love the feel of the pen and you're a, you're a stationary nutter like I am. Like I love a good stationary store, I have to say. Uh, I'm not digressing. I want to, I want to make it really clear to you that marketing research starts with these elements. You know, <clears throat> what is the product you're going to um, offer? Is it viable? Is there a market? Can you make a profit out of it? Is the profit sustainable? And is it going to give you um, the lifestyle and enable you to do the bigger things that you want to do in your life and in your business. So that's a really critical piece. Start with you. The next tip that I want to talk about is, do you know who your customer is? Uh, and again, for those of you who know me, will be familiar with this concept. I often will speak about through our workshops and in, and in the various lives that we've done. If I was to say to you, if you were looking at a crowd of people, could you identify in that crowd who are your customers? Can you can you pinpoint them? Can you see them in your mind's eye? Do you know what they look like? Do you know what they're feeling? Do you know how they walk? Do you know what their speak is? Do you know what their tone of voice is? Do you know what their frustrations are? Do you know what their joys are? Do you know where they're hanging out? You know what what crowded marketplace are they hanging out in? Are they hanging out in Facebook? Are they hanging out in Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest? And the myriad of social media platforms that you can be hanging out on. Are they looking on Google? Are they going to LinkedIn? Are they going to your website landing pages? You need to know all these things as part of your market research. And the market research, again, that you are doing consistently and um, effectively because markets shift so fast. You look at how many social media platforms pop up constantly new technology, new this, new that, it, it's constantly happening that you need to be on top of your game to make sure that you can keep ahead of the game. So know your customer and document it. And, you know, um, for us, you know, we've got a number of customer profiles, avatars, if you will, there's lots of different terminology for that. And it's okay to have many. 
uh, just in your marketing, it might be that you're marketing to one avatar in this, this particular type of post or, or advertising or blog or whatever, or it might be uh, across a number of them, but know who they are and constantly research. Now, if you're, if you're a new business and you don't have customers yet, do you know what? That's okay. Because what you can do is go to market, go talk to people who you think might be your prospective mar uh, market and say, hey, if I had this pen and it cost, cost this much and it was this colour and this feeling and this weight and this is how it, you can use it, would you buy it and would you buy it for this amount of money? You are then gathering data to know whether this product is going to be viable. And, you know, if they say, oh, well, yeah, look, if it's done like this and in this manner, delivered in this manner, um, I can order it online, I can test it, whatever. Whatever these things are that you you um, feel are the right journey for your prospective customer, ask your prospective customers. Walk, go to trade shows, walk the shopping centres, speak to family and friends, speak to other business owners. What networks do you belong to that you can gather this market research even if you don't haven't launched your business yet. This is very critical because if you don't know why you are doing what you are doing and you don't, that, that doesn't give you a fire in the belly and you don't know who your customer is, how on earth can you effectively market to them? Because what you then need to know is, well, I, I know it's this avatar, you know, that's a female, they're 35 to 55, they love good stationery, they uh, what different colours because they wear different colours. You know, we're all we're often we're colourful people, um, and they want this sort of journey and they want this sort of feeling and that it's not going to be dirty. You can see my pen has has made, made my hand super dirty today. Uh, I'm okay with that because I know what I did wrong. I changed the ink and I didn't screw it in properly. So I'm okay with that. Uh, but maybe you don't mind that. Uh, maybe you want the one that doesn't leak. And you want to um, make sure that your customers have a wonderful journey. Yeah, you know, these are all. This is all good data. This is data for those of you who sell pens that you don't want a pen that does that uh, live and real, like that, that literally happened in the last two minutes whilst I was handling my pen. But you need to know where are they, where are they hanging out, when are they there. So not just oh well, I'm going to go to Facebook because that's what I I like. Your customers don't give up. Excuse my French. Crap what, fa what um, social media platforms you like. You need to be on the platforms that your customers are hanging out on. I hope that makes sense. Nobody cares what you like, whether you don't like TikTok. I didn't quite understand it when that started. But you need to find out where are your prospective customers hanging out. Not just where, but what day, what time, what frequency, what are they looking for um, to solve their problems? And there's a very good chance that they might be on um, link, in LinkedIn for a different reason that they might be on Instagram. They might be on Facebook for a different reason. And yes, thank you, uh, Leanne. I can see you've popped a comment in. Agree, it's about how your customer feels <clears throat> because that's what you connect to, right? So you need to know precisely where they are, when they are, what day of time and what frequency because, hey, that's where you've got to put your marketing activities to. There is no point if you've just determined through your market research, talking to prospective customers, existing customers, that they are women 35 to 55, love pens, colourful, they feel great, they're easy to use, don't really mind that you get mucky hands, and, um, you, and they're on LinkedIn, uh, maybe early in the morning on a weekday. Let's say you do your ad. Uh, that is on a Saturday thinking, oh, they're just going to want to look at it when they're relaxing because they're not going to look at buying pens then. And I'm going to go to Facebook because I think that's where they are. And my audience is going to be broad. So I'm going to make it, oh, I want all gals. So I'm going to go 25 to 65 and, I've, and I'm doing Facebook only and it's um, on a weekend, Saturday, after the kids have done their sports. So maybe about 11.30 lunch, just before they get lunchtime ready. Can you see the the, the craziness of that? That without doing the market research of where your customers are, you're just wasting your time and effort. You might have the odd little win on a Saturday. Yep, you might find precisely your person. But if you're going broad and your market is actually narrow, you are nuts. You are absolutely nuts, wasting time and effort. So you need to find where they are. Now, the wonderful thing is about a lot of the social media platforms and the scheduling software platforms and your Google Analytics all the analytics you can get, you can find that data out really, really easily. So there is no excuse for you not to do that. Now, 
let's let's continue on with the market research. Let's explore some of the other areas because a lot of people just think, oh, it's about marketing. Uh, yeah, you're right. But you know what? Market research also involves, well, what's the size of my market? Now, um, I put a post up in a network group last night that I belong to. It's called the Six Star Business, and it's something that I belong to. Now, you know, Navigate Biz, we're a business community. Absolutely, we are mentors and coaches. But Joanne Brooks, CEO of Navigate, needs um, to belong to groups as well that can build and expand my skills. So the research I did was where can I go and find that resource? So I found that in the Six Star Business community. Um, so, you know, it's a beautiful complement to what we do at Navigate and what I do. So I digress. I, I put, a, put a post in there to talk about, you know, let's talk about the positives that came out of COVID because we hear all the bad stuff that comes out of it. And one of them was that I found was that I could go to a, to a network and find um, my market research. That one of the things that what I observed and noticed was that, you know what, we are now a global village. I heard someone use that term just the other day. I went, you are so right. I love that term. You know, every single business today, no matter what you're selling, whether it's pens, coffee, accounting, um, tables, the table I'm sitting at, computers, whatever, you now have a global opportunity. And so we are all now have the opportunity to be global. So, you know, part of your market research is finding out where your customers are. And, you know, they could be on the other side of the world. So don't feel limited by that. Don't feel overwhelmed by that. Look at it, you know, because Nick and I often talk about, I know Leanne's here on the chat and I do appreciate you being there. You, you're right. And everything that we do needs to be productive and needs to give an, us an ROI, particularly if your business is young and you are doing the many, the many functions of business. So you need to be smart about how you use your time. So back to um, business size of business opportunity. You know, we Nick and I often talk about that your goals need to be so large, they, they almost take your breath away. And it might be that those goals are going to take you five, 10 years or longer to achieve. And so if you do, an, do the analysis and if you come into the Navigate Biz community, you will get the access to those tools that help you to do that, is to research that, oh, crikey, well, the opportunity is now worldwide. I'm going to sell pens everywhere or my service or my product. Uh, Leanne is a beautiful, a beautiful um, meditation and, you know, all that beautiful spiritual um, work that she does with her um, community, but also know I'm sure she does it remotely as well. So the opportunity, it doesn't matter what you do is the point. So if you look at that opportunity, you go, wow, that does take my breath away. I can't possibly do that in the next year. You know what? That's fine and great. Maybe you go, right, okay, well, I'm going to aim for that opportunity through my market research. I've worked out my market research is, my market opportunity is not this in my local community. It's this. And my arms are wide, wide, wide. Um, so I'm going to take 10 years to do that potentially. So let's work, let's engineer this backwards to what you need to do every, you know, by the ninth year, eight, seven, six, five, fifth year, one year, one month, one week, one day. What have you got to do today that speaks to that big goal? That's what should keep you excited and, and motivated in what you do. So size of, size of opportunity is super important. The next piece that a lot of people don't consider carefully enough. I know you all think about, well, what am I going to sell my product for? What am I going to sell this pen for as against this pen for? My accounting service, my meditation service, my massage service, my desk selling service, whatever it is, my service that I deliver. <coughs> Excuse me. And not enough um, focus is given to what it costs you to create this product. And I don't care whether it's something you can touch and feel like a pen or something that is a service. And I would say to you that navigate, you could, would consider Navigate as a service. Meditation could be a service. Bookkeeping and accounting is a service. It doesn't matter what product or service you're offering. If you are simply pricing it to meet what you think the market will pay because you've not done the research, you've not asked, and if you think price is the most, most sensitive piece in your business, you have got a massive problem. I can guarantee you, you have a massive problem. Price must be worked out with regards to what, yes, what will the customers pay? What are your competitors charging? What extra value are you bringing to your product or service? 
what years of experience are you bringing to your service when somebody says to well, you, you did that in 30 minutes. Why would I pay you X, Y, Z? Well, hey, maybe it took you 30 years to be able to do that in 30 minutes. And that justifies why you need to charge the value that you do because you honour honor the experience and the tenure that you've put in and the sweat and the and the, you know all the tears and the anxiety and the and the growth and the learning and the challenges and the joys that you've experienced by getting to this point today to be able to charge the money that you do so if you feel folk price in your sales journey is the most sensitive piece of said you've got a massive problem and you need to get into our sales mastery program because we're going to knock that out of you because it's not the way sales should be done. Sales is about the value and the feeling, again, as Leanne pointed out, that your customers feel. So pricing is super important that you need to monitor. And we've got a bunch of tools for our people in our business community to put each and every product and service through our pricing tool to work out, if I charge this, it's going to cost me that to deliver it, whether it's manufacture, logistics, packaging, um, internet, if it's virtual, you know, hosting fees, all those sort of things. Uh, the rent that you've got to pay for your premises, or the 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 subscriptions that you've got to deliver what you do, what's at the bottom line? Is it so low that you go, oh, crikey, this, this is not going to be viable. I'm a bit nervous of putting up my price. Now, if, you're not, if you've got a concern about that, we've got a webinar tutorial on the, um, oh, I'm going to say it's next week, yes, about how to increase prices and keep your customer. So this market research you need to do now before you jump into this webinar next week to be sure or to get a sense of how profitable and consistent will your profitability be for each and every product and service. Be mindful that the rate of profitability per product and service can vary. There are going to be some products like this low price pen that the profitability might be a percentage, but the profitability of this pen is going to be considerably higher because it's a high price product. Know your competitors. What are they doing? You know, one thing that we say to all our customers in Navigate, go and buy your, customer, your competitor's product. And a lot of people go, really? Why would I want to do that? Oh, my gosh. So much gold in what you can learn from the journey, the feeling, the experience, the pricing, the packaging, everything that they do. That's insight. That's data for you to be able to be one inch above the crowd, be purple cow, be the better be the better competitor in the market to everybody else that's out there. And finally, and last, the last one is check your journey as well as your, as your competitor's journey. And you're going to go, what? Well, guess what? Things break on websites. That happens to us, not as not regularly, but it happens enough that it means that the people, the team in Navigate Biz, we go and buy our own product. Now, you can put coupons into your own product so you don't have to hit your credit card or put it through your credit card and see what's happening. Because the last thing you want is an excited prospect coming to your page, your site, your social media site to buy, and there's a bloody great barrier in front of them. Guess what? They're going to keep scrolling because they're going, oh, that was too hard. You don't want that. You want your customer to feel, oh, this was easy. This is exciting. I need to tell everybody about this most amazing pen that doesn't leak. <laughs> but you need to make sure that your journey is super, super um, seamless. And that is all the components of market research. You can probably see this is a bit of a long life, um, but there's so many elements to it. So do, do make the effort, make the time to work on your business and work through all that. So let's quickly recap. Starts with you. Who is your customer? Where are they? When are they? How do they find you? What's the size of the market? What's your pricing opportunity? What's the pricing opportunity to increase profitability? whilst increasing, maybe you don't need to increase your price, but maybe you can increase profitability. Want to know how to do that? Go check out our webinar next week. Check out your competitors, buy their product, check your own journey. And what value are you bringing? Be, be deep, be very connected to that because it connects to your bigger goal, your purpose and your legacy. That's me. Now we have Biz Bootcamp starting this week. So if all these things sound like that's amazing, but I'm, oh God, how do I do that? Biz Bootcamp literally starts today not too late. You can actually join anytime between now and next Thursday. No problem at all. Um, go and check us out, navigatebiz, N-A-V-I-G-A-B-I-Z dot com. And you can, you can actually take control of your business. Hear all this stuff from Nick and I over the next 56 days. If that doesn't resonate with you, free tutorial um, next week, next Thursday, 21st, how to price your product and increase your product price 
and keep your customer. Sales mastery might be something you want to jump into. That's a brand new program that we're um, just finalizing now, but you can get access to it now. No problem at all. So check us out. Can't wait to see you in our community. If you have questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, I'm 20 minutes pretty much on the button. So I'm out of here because that's well and truly over the normal live length for me. But there was lots to cover today. Have an amazing Easter break for those of you who are taking that break. If you are working, keep safe, keep well. And uh, I will see you. We'll be back on Tuesday with some more lives. Thank you, Leanne, for jumping into the chat and appreciate that. You've been a regular here for the last few times, so I really appreciate it. Take care and I'll see you soon. You keep that momentum going in your business. Can't wait to see how it goes. Ta-da for now.